Welcome to My Off-Grid Adventures. I'm Frank, and I'm glad you're here with me today. I'm gonna to try something that I hope will help make my solar array a little bit more efficient. This one is working really well at powering my EcoFlow Delta, and that is plugged in all the time to my 30 amp to my RV here. But I also have a 400 watt anchor solar panel that's up on top of my RV's roof. And I haven't yet connected that to anything because it doesn't match anything in my array here. So I can't connect it to that. But I do have a Rego uh, battery, 400 amp hour battery that is in my RV, the lithium ion, the LifePo 4. And what I'm thinking is if I connect the 400 watt anchor solar panels that are on the roof directly to that um, to that Rego battery, that that will take some of the load burden off of my solar array, which has to always not only keep uh, my EcoFlow Delta charged, but it also has to feed through that into the RV's own battery. So what I'm hoping is, is that this 400 watt anchor solar system here will keep that Rego battery charged so that the solar array that I have can do the heavy lifting of the rest of the work. Now, I do know that I need to use a charge controller, so there has to be a charge controller in between the solar panel that's on the roof and the battery. I have that. Uh, I also have a Bluetooth connector for that charge controller so that I can monitor the, the usage and the power that I'm getting from the panels. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut everything off and disconnect the 30 amp from the battery and, and disconnect the battery. And then we're going to do a little bit of wiring. I have to strip the ends of a few wires and figure out the best ways to get them all together. So let's figure this out together. Glad you're here with me. Let's get started. This is what we're gonna be working with. And I'm not sure which of these cables I'm gonna end up using. I'm gonna start with that one unless it doesn't fit. And then we'll go to one of these. I've got to decide which connectors to put on the ends of those and then connect the solar panel to these, that positive and negative, and then these to the battery. And we've got the Bluetooth module. And that's what we have to work with. You can see we have the Rego battery with this Anderson connector unplugged. And I've also unplugged the 30 amp. I'm just trying to get the distance right or the length right of this cable. And then I'm going to disconnect those again so that I can cut the ends of the cable and put the right connectors on them. Because the shorter these are, the more efficient they will be. So I'm going to take that little strap that was holding it together and mark my spot. So this just has to be long enough to reach the charge controller that I think I'm going to mount to the bottom of the RV. That's not where most people would mount these, but I don't travel with my RV. It's in a stationary place on our 60 acre off-grid property. So, so I'm gonna mount it and the Bluetooth connection to the bottom of the RV. And then I just have to run a wire from the charge controller to the battery terminal connector on the front of the RV. And in order to connect the wires, you put them in there and then you're supposed to turn this little screwdriver, or turn that little screw, I should say, with a screwdriver. I'm give myself a little more room just than I planned, just in case. I can always cut it back, right? We'll use the rest of the cord as our wire for connecting to the battery from the charge controller.
Now the other wire, this end I can put right in here, but the other end I need to, I'm hoping, be able to use these and then I can slip it where, slip it in where the rest of the wires that go to the battery are located on the front of the RV. I am very clumsy. Can you tell? If you've watched my videos, you know I drop tools and screws. And you've heard me say that sometimes I can't even find what I drop after I drop it. It's my luck. In fact, I was searching frantically just to find that. Uh, this tool, I couldn't find it anywhere. Where was it? In a bag of clothes, of all things. As you can see on this controller, there's also clearly an indicator for the battery, and we'll do just like it says, put the red and the plus and the black into the negative. This had a bigger grip. Could have bought a better mini screwdriver for sure. Okay, that's it for the charge controller. And then this Bluetooth device uh, plugs into this as well. This plugs into this telephone port. Now let's uh, put these. I'll show you why I want to use this because if I were to use these I would have to completely back out because this the closed circle would make me have to completely back out the bolt that I'm going to attach this to and then some of the wires might come off so I'm hoping that I can just loosen it enough I'm sure that's how it's supposed to be open uh, I'm hoping that I can just loosen it enough that I can slip that in. Let's hope and see. I've never done this, so we're learning. thought I was going to drop it, didn't you? thought I was going to drop the tool. I think you know me. You might. Now, I think what you do is just put this over. Ah, oh, man. Not, not short enough. There's still a chance that I might drop this. You might be right. By the way, if you can hear a fan in the background, I wonder... If I didn't turn the power off, that's my DeWalt 20 volt cordless fan. Give that one more. Oh, there you go. What do you think? I really don't think that's going anywhere. Now do you see why that is something I don't want to back out everything? There's a lot of wires going in there and I just want to back off each one enough to slip that in and tighten it again. A lot of gobbledygook going on down there. Start with the negative just because it's closest. Seems like it worked. That's the positive one that has the most gobbledygook. And that is a different size thread, or a different size nut.
seems like too many wires. Next we're gonna connect the cables back to the solar panel. Here's the solar panel. Then we're going to plug the battery back in. It's this big connector. Well, we did it. We got everything working. And according to the app, it's operating as it should. So now we have 800 watts of potential from our solar array and 400 additional from the solar panel that's up on the roof. So that should keep things going with less dependence on our gas generator. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, would you give it a thumbs up? And for more content like this about living off grid in Michigan, please subscribe. We'd love to have you join us. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.